I just drove it out. Welcome back to Lydia's Plate. It is so good to make a video for you guys again. Life has been absolutely crazy, but here we go. So today I want to bring you something to go with fall and pumpkins and Thanksgiving, harvest, all of that. So to me, pumpkins do just that. This has become a favorite in our house. It is called Passionate Pumpkin Dessert and it's similar to Six in the Pan, except instead of that chocolate layer, there's gonna be a pumpkin layer instead. Let's get going. So first I'm gonna get started with the base. It's very simple. It's supposed to be butter, flour, and crushed pecans, but I'm almost out of butter, so I'm using coconut oil. I've done this a couple times already, and it works great. And I'm using regular flour, but I have done it with almond flour as well, so if you want a gluten-free version, almond flour will work. And I actually don't have any pecans right now either, but I have chopped peanuts or crushed peanuts, whatever you want to call them. They're, they're very finely chopped. So I'm going to do peanuts in here. I've done this once before already too, and it does give a slight peanut butter flavor in the crust, but we don't mind that at all. It's been really yummy actually. So I'm going to do that again. Plus I have these crushed peanuts now that I need to use up anyways. So I'm just going to mix this around a bit, get it kind of all combined until it looks kind of like a shortbread cookie dough, and then I'll spread it out in the pan. It does take a little bit of teasing, but it's usually not too bad to get it all in place. There we go. Now that the crust is basically done, it's going to bake for 20 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And, and then I will let it cool for quite a while, uh, about an hour to two hours, until it feels pretty cool to the touch. I have sometimes put it in the fridge, but today I have a few other things to do now this afternoon anyways, so it's just going to cool here on the island once it's baked. So I don't have any Cool Whip on hand. I've kind of quit buying it anyways because I want the real thing. So I'm going to whip up some cream first, get some whipped cream going, and then I'll put aside most of it and just keep what I need in the bowl. In the meantime, I'm going to get everything else ready that I'll need. I realized I was not going to have enough pumpkin pie spice for the whipped cream. So here comes out my trusty pumpkin pie spice recipe and I'll whip up a batch. It is a pretty big batch so if you're wanting to try it for the first time you may want to do a smaller batch. I don't remember where I picked this up from somewhere on Google and I've tweaked it to my tastes so because I know I like it, I make a pretty big batch. So for example, I'm starting off with a quarter cup of cinnamon. 
two tablespoons of ginger, except that my bottle ran out and I was searching frantically already all over through all my spices and I could not find ginger and I was thinking, but it's not on my shopping list, what? Do I really not have ginger? Oh shoot. I know it'll still taste okay without that much ginger, but I want that much ginger, so wasn't sure what I was going to do, and then I did find another bottle. In the meantime, while I'm working on this spice blend, I'm keeping an eye on my whipped cream because I don't want to turn it into butter. Now it is ready, but I'm going to finish with the spice blend first just so I can clean up a little bit and finish one task at a time. <laughs> There we go, that's all done. Now I'll keep on moving here. So I'm gonna put most of this whipped cream into the brown bowl where my scraper was in. I only need a cup of whipped cream for the cream cheese layer, so I didn't get a good shot of that. I didn't even think of it, I'm sorry. But there's approximately a cup between what's on my beaters and what I left in the bowl for this cream cheese layer. My cream cheese had been in the freezer and I kind of decided to do this little spur, of, you know, just on a whim. So my cream cheese was still quite frozen. I'm just going to throw it in the microwave for a bit and get it to the point where the beaters can handle it. Now while the cream cheese is warming up, I'm going to add my icing sugar already. And you'll see in a bit, I add the cream cheese and then I was expecting the icing sugar to just go poof and explode all over when it started but I was pleasantly surprised that it didn't. And I had purposely kind of tried to mash the cream cheese onto there a little bit and work it in a little bit so it would hopefully hold the icing sugar down, and it did. So, little tip, trick, whatever you want to call it, it worked for me, hopefully it'll work for you too, because I hate it when that icing sugar just explodes everywhere. Maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, but every time I'm mixing something up here, I'm also starting off on a very slow speed, so anybody who does not have experience yet uh, may get a very nasty surprise when they want to just flip that mixer on to whatever setting it's supposed to be on for, you know, whipping up a layer or icing or whatever, but... Um, yeah, I've done that a few times and the mess was not fun So I'm starting off very slow and slowly speeding it up to where it can handle what it's doing in the bowl without throwing it out of the bowl All right, so this layer is ready to go on and I'm just going to quickly get this pumpkin pie spice into the whipped cream so I can put it away. And then I will spread the cream cheese layer in my pan. Just before I do that, I did notice that these beaters might want to drip, so I'm quickly going to grab that.
surprise, surprise, when I wanted to put the cake in here to try to chill that layer as much as possible, I found a shelf full of eggs. We're getting almost two dozen eggs a day, and so we have a lot of eggs, and they need to go to the fridge downstairs. So there we go, that's done. Sandra came and helped me out. She took them downstairs for me, and I'm gonna keep working here. I'm ready to do the pumpkin layer. So because I decided to do the spur of the moment, my pumpkin is not fully thawed either. So I'm breaking off all the stuff that is thawed and then I'm going to scoop it onto the same plate that I warmed up the cream cheese on and just stick that in the microwave for a minute or two as well. In the meantime, while that pumpkin is in the microwave, I'm going to add two packages worth of instant vanilla pudding mix into this layer. It helps sweeten the pumpkin a bit and it also helps thicken the layer so that it'll hold its shape when you want to cut your pieces and everything. So the recipe calls for two boxes of instant vanilla pudding mix. I buy this big bulk package just because that's what I like to do. I like to buy in bulk when possible and the pudding does not go bad very quickly so it's just super handy to have on hand. And then it lasts me for a long time as well. So same as I did with the cream cheese layer and the icing sugar, I'm using the pumpkin and the milk to kind of calm down that instant vanilla pudding mix just so that it won't go poof all over either. <laughs> Now I very carefully left it on the very lowest speed as I started to lift up just so that it would make my job easier here with scraping off the beaters a little bit. Um, I just start lifting up the mixer head until the beaters want to spray out of the bowl and then I quickly shut it off. It just helps kind of swing off a lot of whatever is hanging on to the beaters. That way there isn't so much to scrape off and the kids were very happily waiting for that job to be done. They were more than happy to be licking off those beaters. They love it when I'm making dessert. Of course, it's not fair if only two kids get something, so two of them get the beaters, and then the other two are still waiting for when the scraper and the spoon and these two bowls are gonna be done, and then they will be licking those out too. I'm very gently and carefully spooning this pumpkin layer over because the cream cheese layer was not very firmed up yet. And then I'm just going to tease it into place just like I teased that crust into everywhere that it needed to go. Once it's pretty much covering the cream cheese layer, then I can just go ahead and spread it normally. Onto the whipped cream, just quickly mix in that pumpkin pie spice a little bit, and then this layer is going to need a lot of teasing. I already thought I was whipping up more cream than needed because I always find that this layer runs very, very short. It makes a very, very thin layer of whipped cream on top, so more whipped cream would definitely be easy, easier to spread over the top, but at the same time, if you don't like a thick layer of whipped cream, then you're going to prefer it this way anyways. So if you were using a tub of Cool Whip, you would do 
about a quarter to a third of it in the cream cheese layer and all the remaining four on top. So the kids were all still busy around me here and they were goofing off a little bit so I was teasing them and they were teasing me a little bit and we were just having a good time. I could not believe it that I dropped the scraper in there. Man, I felt so klutzy, but whatever. We decided to have a little fun with it, and I was a little overdramatic for Carissa because she was getting quite a kick out of it, so I gave her a little show, and, and then I just kept working away at it, trying to make it all look all nice again so nobody will know. <laughs> Alrighty, supper is all done and we are ready for dessert. Those of us who do really like pumpkin, we love all these pumpkin desserts. So pumpkin muffins, pumpkin bars, pumpkin passionate dessert, uh, pumpkin pie, yummy. That is one they've been asking for again too. So soon, soon I'll make pumpkin pie again. But for now, this is going to do it and I was very pleasantly surprised by how much it had firmed up in the short hour or two that it had in the fridge until supper was done and the kids were very excited to bring their plates over and get a big piece of this. It was so tasty. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed seeing a new recipe. Maybe it's not new. Maybe it reminds you of an old favorite. But thank you so much for watching. It's so good to be back on YouTube. And I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.